Welcome to ADHD is Over, a new podcast on a seemingly old label that we're going to be peeling off. Join my wife, Tatiana, and I as we journey with our family, the Wyden family, through the land of confusing information. We're going to visit both sides and let you decide because the power is with you. Welcome to ADHD is Over. Hello, hello, and welcome back. And if it's your first time, welcome, welcome, dear listener, from whatever corner of the world you're tuning in from. We have about 42 countries at some point, we counted, which is just awesome. Warms my heart, touches my soul. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you're coming back again and again, thank you for being a repeating, 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 repeat listener. Really appreciate it. Today's episode, I'm throwing out, as some of you know, I like to throw out claims and explore them in sort of a, not a channeling information, but a just kind of a thinking out loud. Um, and hopefully you will get some value out of this. And this episode is around the question, what if ADHD is actually just a coping mechanism? And now that's a very triggering thought very controversial. I get it. Just a claim. So if you're here because you're someone who is open-minded, who wants to know what I call the other side of the incomplete and one-sided narrative, right? Someone who is perhaps interested in open to, uh, you know, going down the road less traveled, which is the road my wife and I and our, our two sons have been traveling on, right? It's the non-medication, non-label kind of road. And again, we're not a movement that's anti-meds. We had some speakers on our podcast, some experts um, that I got to interview that are anti-meds. We have some to, that are just like ourselves, meaning meds are not good for young children, right? But some adults can take them responsibly and so forth. So there's many, um, you know, views on this, but we're not anti-meds as we are also not anti-vaccine. Uh, but we have our own movement and we believe that the road less traveled is a road that can really bring lots of, lots of fruitful, uh, what I call happiness, fulfillment in life. And that's what we want to share with parents around the world. So by making these claims and by raising these questions, uh, it's really just a, to create a, a little bit of a new context of what if we uh, explored this a little bit further. So today is not going to be a long episode, but I think it's going to be exciting because we're going to explore, first of all, what is a coping mechanism? And Roman, what do you mean by what if ADHD was just a coping mechanism? So as I often do this, I looked up the definition of a coping mechanism. And here's the coping mechanism definition, right? An adaptation to environmental stress that is based on conscious or unconscious choice and that enhances control over behavior or gives psychological comfort. Now, interesting. If we listen to this again, but we don't, we pretend it's not the definition of coping mechanism, but the definition of ADHD. Here we go. ADHD, an adaptation to environmental stress that is based on conscious or unconscious choice and that enhances control over behavior or gives psychological comfort, right? So that's why I thought it was interesting to explore this, right? Because coping mechanisms, as we all know, are there because we cannot cope with certain feelings or emotions, right? If you look at all the addictions, right? Like uh, eating, uh, overeating, or, or drug abuse, alcohol, even caffeine, workaholism, sex addiction, pornography, video games, shopping, gambling. All these addictions are basically coping mechanisms, right? To help us not even be with, but avoid feeling certain feelings and emotions. That's what a coping mechanism is. Hence, at the end of the definition, it says, or gives psychological comfort. It doesn't say, or psychologically helps us to be with feelings or helps us resolve those emotions and feelings or process them, or, right? Confront them, whatever. It's psychological comfort. So looking at it that way, I had at some point asked the question, 
is ADHD simply an addiction? And I thought, well, that's weird. People are going to respond weird to that because it was going to be the same exploration, right? To, to think this through. But then I thought, well, addictions are really coping mechanisms. So when I looked up the definition of a coping mechanism, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That really sounds close to ADHD. It really does. At least the ADHD definition that we have come to, uh, uh, um, I not admire, but that, that we've come to accept or discover during our seven years of research. And the beginning of this coping mechanism definition says an adaptation to environmental stress. I believe after six years of research and hundreds of interviews later with top level experts, renowned experts, that everyone is pointing in the same direction. That direction is environmental stress. Now, we could go further and say this definition here and coping mechanism should probably be updated to say an adaptation to environmental stress and trauma, because I believe stress is really uh, uh, the representation of a, a, a lowercase t trauma, um, as Gabor Mate so uh, uh, elo eloquently points out. And then there's trauma, which is capital T traumas, right? Such as uh, abuse, uh, divorce, like the heavy hitters. But there's a reason why coping mechanism uses this definition, an adaptation to environmental stress. Because stress could be as simple as, well, just stress, right? If like a mother is working up until her last day of her pregnancy and she is at a stressful job, that, that fetus in the belly, right? That's prenatal stress affects a child's nervous system. And I've talked to both Stephen Porges, the inventor of the polyvagal theory, uh, Bessel van der Kolk, the, the gentleman who wrote The Body Keeps the Score. And they're both agreeing with that, that there is environmental stress, traumas that get stuck in the body, right? In the nervous system. The nervous system uh, goes into the defensive mode and it's locked in defensive mode, as Stephen Porges puts it. And so therefore, it is an adaptation to environmental stress, and that helps us then to cope with it. That's why it's a coping mechanism. It gives us psychological comfort, right? It says enhances control over behavior or gives us psychological comfort. So when I read the definition of coping mechanism and I looked at how we, together with these top level experts, have started to define uh, ADHD, there's a major overlap. So why am I doing this? What am I actually trying to say? Am I trying to say, oh, ADHD is not real and uh, it's just a coping mechanism and, uh, or ADHD is an addiction? No, I'm just posing a question. I have a claim and that claim is, could it be that ADHD is a coping mechanism and it is a coping mechanism because someone with these symptoms is trying to cope with something, and just like it says here uh, in the definition, conscious or unconscious, meaning they might not be aware, in most cases of children, definitely not aware, they're not, their brains aren't developed enough, unaware of what they're doing and why they're doing it. And it's so interesting, you know, when parents say, oh, he definitely has a disorder because he does something and it says, I don't know why I do this, right? And so we assume, oh, well, that's because that's something wrong is in the brain, the child's a problem. Well, I'm here to say, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because when children unconsciously do this in order to cope with something, and uh, one of my recent guests, Ann Hintz, uh, whose uh, episode is going to be posted, I believe, this weekend, talked about how a lot of children, because of the trauma, the energy that's stuck in their bodies, right? When they feel uncomfortable, they need to move. When there's too much energy stuck in their body, they need to move. Or perhaps when they feel uncomfortable in a situation, in a moment, when they're anticipating the worst, even though nothing's about to happen, but they think, oh, this sound reminds me of my dad screaming. This smell reminds me of, you know, uh, the, the, the divorce. This, you know, you get the idea. When they're in that state of mind with that locked nervous system, locked in defense mode, 
they move. They get impulse, impulses to move or to sit down or to stand up or to do something that we then call abnormal. And we call it uh, hyperactivity or impulsivity and so forth and hypervigilance when in fact they are just moving their body. They are just following their impulses. And I know when I say just, people often say, well, yeah, but, uh, you know, kids can't just run out into the street and, you know, they're going to get run over by a car if they follow every impulse. Well, yeah, I'm not saying every impulse at a young age is to be just simply, uh, you know, allowed and, and unsupervised and go for it, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. Because the majority of the impulses that we look at and say, oh, that's impulsivity in a child, that's ADHD, the majority of those impulses pop up in a school environment or in an environment where there's just a lot of stress for a child and they need to keep moving, moving on. I don't mean just physically move, but they need to keep moving from thought to thought. They need to, they're trying to cope with something. That's my point here. They are trying to cope with certain conscious or unconscious feelings or emotions that they don't know how to cope with because A, no one's taught them. No one's even taught their own parents how to do it. And B, they're not aware of it. And C, you have a society that says, oh, it's the child's problem. Their brain's a problem. They have a disorder. So don't worry. There's nothing else you can do except for medication and some therapies. And, you know, there's many other treatments, but it's always the child's the problem. It's never what happened, what is going on, why is that child trying to cope with this? So therefore, I actually do believe that ADHD is a coping mechanism, literally a coping mechanism. And I'm going to read one more time the definition of a coping mechanism. An adaptation to environmental stress that is based on conscious or unconscious choice and that enhances control over behavior or gives psychological comfort. To me, that's just too close to what ADHD is. Too close. So I just wanted to explore that. Perhaps it inspires you to, to look at your child differently. Perhaps it inspires you to continue this dialogue or to question it or to look more into addiction and coping mechanisms. Because it is also obviously part of the, the, I call it camp coping. You know, it's the movement that's pro-medication, pro-label. It is definitely something that's part of their doomsday th uh, um, vision when parents are first told about ADHD that if you don't medicate your child, then they may end up getting in trouble, getting into drugs and end up in prison. That's the sort of doomsday, you know, prophecy you get. Uh, just to be reminded that you should put them on medication. Now, I looked a lot into that, and I really looked at addiction versus ADHD or addiction and ADHD and so forth. And while there was a 30-year study by Nadine Lambert out of Berkeley that proved that I was actually a myth, that it was the complete opposite, you know, she followed 30 uh, uh, young children, ha uh, sorry, I think it was, no, it was uh, close to 500 um, young children some medicated, some not, into their 30s. That's where the 30 came in. So close to, I think it was close to 500 children. She followed them for 30 years. And she noticed at the end of the study that it was the opposite, that it was actually the medicated children for ADHD that were more likely to get into smoking, alcohol, drugs, and, and, and some ending up in jail. It was not what the other side had projected. So knowing that, right, if we know that, we can say, well, hold on. So why do they keep saying uh, kids that are unmedicated uh, for ADHD uh, more likely to end up in jail, right? Why do they say that? Because to me, that just never sat well, right? To hear that from our, teach, our son's teacher, um, the principal of the school, and other uh, uh, professionals who you know, were there to diagnose our son and who gave us advice on what to do, they all mentioned it. And I've talked to so many parents who mentioned the same thing. They've gotten the doomsday prophecy. They've heard that if they don't medicate their children, they will end up getting in trouble, getting into drugs, end up in jail possibly, have divorces, crash cars, and so forth, right? So not a great thing to hear when you're a parent. 
especially when you first get a diagnosis, which is why we're working on a ADHD diagnosis survival guide. And that should be out hopefully before Christmas as a free download. And of course, I'll let you all know when that's coming out. We're really excited about that. But that's the reason why we wanted to do this survival guide, right? But back to addiction and ADHD. One of the reasons why they say it is because our establishments have not taken the time and energy to dig deeper. Because if we dig deeper, underneath addiction and ADHD, there's a similarity. There's a thing in common, and that's the coping mechanism. So, you know, it's, again, I never say it's a lie, but it's incomplete to say, if you have ADHD, most likely you'll get into an addiction later. Yes, that's partially true, but it's not because you have this thing called ADHD. It's because you're already wired to use coping mechanisms in your life, right? To, as the definition of coping mechanism says, give to seek psychological comfort. And so, yes, if your brain is wired that way already, because you've had, again, coping mechanism definition says, you've had to adapt to environmental stress based in conscious or unconscious, right? Choices. Therefore, your brain is wired to look for a coping mechanism. And the coping mechanism in the case of ADHD is what? Well, it's avoiding being in the moment. It's avoiding having to do stuff that's boring, right? It's avoiding sitting still. It's avoiding being in that box that the current uh, public educational system still is, right? It's avoiding these things. That's the coping mechanism, right? In the case of, say, drugs or alcohol, your coping mechanism is to go out and drink or to use a certain drug of your choice, right? That gives you that high. Well, the high that these children are after, right, obviously, is, is the thrill of Tom Hartman, uh, the, the wonderful author, expert, friend now, um, who wrote Hunters in a Farmer's World. That's one of the first books we read, actually the, the first book, full book on ADHD, besides, you know, online research. He pointed it out at some point. He said that what, what Maslow and his pyramid is missing is this, uh, um, this need to feel alive. And that really stuck with me, that people, hunters, people with ADHD brains, have a need to feel alive. That's why they, at school, will pull someone's hair or throw a paper airplane or look out the window because there's a squirrel, right? That need to feel alive in the present, to be there when stuff is happening, not to miss out, that's almost like a drug. And that drug, you know, is the, the coping mechanism uses that. So it's almost like, you know, no wonder if a child grows up that way, that eventually when the child comes across a drug, in the case of Ritalin, Adderall, if you're old enough to understand, oh, wait a minute, I am not so accepted without it. Once I take it, I'm accepted and I'm focused, right? Eventually, it becomes this, this dependence on an external substance to function well or to be liked in society. Or maybe even better, the opposite, to not be hated, right? Because if you're a child with ADHD and, and you're at school and you're not medicated and you're, you know, exhibiting ADHD behavior and you're constantly getting in trouble, the last thing you want is to be hated. You want to be loved, right? So if you suddenly realize that once you take your medication, nobody's complaining, everybody seems calm, they're all like, good job, great grades, yay, we're going to buy you a car if you graduate and get great grades, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It creates a dependency on an external substance, in this case, a drug. Again, we're not anti-drug, we're not anti-meds, but if you give this early on to children, hence this is proving, I believe, Nadine Lambert's story, that children who were medicated were more likely to get into alcohol, tobacco, drugs, and end up in jail. In her 30-year study of almost, I think it's between three and 500 children, right? So there, there you have it. There you have it. It's not that people become addicts because of the ADHD. It's the coping mechanism that's underneath what's called ADHD and what's underneath addiction that will have someone's brain be wired that way to become an addict 
but it's not the ADHD. Because again, we have to remember, and I say this again and again, and it's mind blowing how very little people, how only few people get it. When I say ADHD is not a thing, you cannot have it like a tumor. It's not a thing. It's a label. It's an abbreviation of four words that were made up not that long ago. It used to be a different name. And I know I always split the atoms around words, but it's important. It's a label that was created describing a set of symptoms. Symptoms are simply observed behaviors. Someone behaves a certain way. The question then is, why do they behave that way? And the answer is not because they have ADHD, because it does not exist as a thing. It's observed behavior. We then have to dig deeper. Why does someone behave that way? Oh, they're coping with something, right? They have environmental stress or they had environmental stress. And mostly for kids, it's unconscious, right? And they're trying to control that behavior, it gives them psychological comfort. And again, I'm using the words of the definition of a coping mechanism. But I think it fits so perfectly for ADHD. I hope this makes your 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 own brain kind of churn and, and hopefully get the wheel spinning so that you can think, think this through further. Um, I would just say, if anybody ever tells you that if your child is not going to get medicated, they're going to end up a druggie and in jail, uh, that's an incomplete truth. That is an incomplete truth. That can happen, but for way many other reasons. And there's so much more to that statement. It's such a quick media headline too. You know, it's, it, it sounds great. It's, it scares parents into submission to, to use um, stimulant drugs. But just stop there, listen to this episode. And if you have someone who's told you that, perhaps, I really would love to have a conversation with them. Because I believe we need to stop scaring parents into submission for these, these stimulant drugs, especially with children as young as three years old nowadays. Three years old. We have to stop this madness, draw a line in the sand, and ask the right question. Why is this child behaving this way? What happened in that child's life? he or she is adapting to environmental stresses. What are those stresses? And if they're still in, in their environment, how can we reduce those stresses in their environment? How can we help them calm their nervous system to go from locked defense mode to calm, to go from sympathetic state to parasympathetic state? How can we do that? That's where we need to start. In this society, we're starting backwards. We're there waiting with a pill to say, oh, you have ADHD because, well, you have ADHD. This pill will temporarily make it go away and you have it for life. It's a life sentence. And, you know, it's just not true. Those are all incomplete narratives, all of them. And that's why we have this movement. That's why I'm so passionate because no one told us this when our son got diagnosed six years ago. No one came up and said, by the way, here's, you already know the one site on Google. You've already done the research. Now use other search engines. Now talk to other experts, connect your own dots. You know, there's some truth in what this dominant mainstream narrative says. It's not all false. It's not all lies, but it's incomplete and it's one-sided based on interest. No one said that to us. No one. And I'm now seeing it. I've been connecting the dots for seven years and it's starting to add up and I'm excited that hopefully next year we'll be releasing our film and, uh, and the book so parents finally can see both sides and make an educated ch choice, not a, a, a sort of blind decision to compare it to that but an educated choice, hat over the fence, because they've looked at both sides. They're consciously choosing either side. I don't care what side you choose, medication and label yes, or medication and label no thank you. It doesn't matter, there's no good or bad. It has to fit your family, your lifestyle, and you have to be choosing it consciously, knowing the truth on both sides. That's why we do this. Anyway, I hope this brought some value to you. As I always say at the end, thank you for uh, giving me your attention. Uh, your attention is your most valuable commodity. 
everybody wants it, but you chose to give it to us. You could have been on social media. You could have been, you know, watching TV. You could have been doing many things that require your attention, but you gave it to us. And I really appreciate that. And we hope to have you back soon. Uh, if you need more information on this podcast, on the movement, go to ADHDsover.com and look up the definition of coping mechanism. It's interesting. Have a great day. Bye.